The other idea that I'm going to need to connect those uh, three topics is uh, some basic probability. And the best way to illustrate that is a, a simple game, just rolling a dice. And ask the question, if you take a, a dice, you roll it a number of times, and you look at the cumulative score that you get. So let's do it. Roll it the first time. It's a fair dice, and so the numbers 1 to 6 come up with equal probability. And what this shows is the frequency of those occurrences. Do it twice. What do we get? Well, the least score you can get is two ones. So two's the lowest score. The highest score is two sixes. And this shows the distribution of the scores in between. The most likely score is seven. That's because the number of combinations of getting seven is the greatest for two throws. But you'll notice that we've gone from this uniform distribution to something which has got a bit more structure to it. It's turned into a, a triangular shape. Right, do it again. In fact, do it five more times. And what you get then is the highest score being 5 times 6, 30. The lowest score is going to be 5. And our triangular shape has evolved into something a bit more bell-shaped. The most likely score is 17, 17 or 18. We'll do it again, do it 10 times, and again you can see that this shape is sort of become embedded. Okay? The highest score is 60, the least score is going to be 10, and the average score is between 30 and 40. Well, if you keep on doing that, then in actual fact, this shape more or less stays the same. And there's a, an extremely important theorem in mathematics, which is called the central limit theorem of statistics, which says if you keep on doing things randomly, and you look at the cumulative score of the numbers of dice throws that you get, for example, then eventually the distribution turns into the, the normal distribution. And in fact, more correctly, for the case that we're looking at, because the, the score is going to be a discrete number, it becomes a Poisson distribution. Anybody know who uh, the guy on the left is? Sorry? No offers. It is the Hollow Man, and the Hollow Man was played by this guy. Anybody know who he is? Kevin Bacon. There was a, a game out which contended that Kevin Bacon is the most highly connected actor in Hollywood. And the game works like this. You pick an actor at random, and you try and look at the co-stars that the actor has had and get to Kevin Bacon in the fewest number of steps possible. So there's Kevin Bacon. Tom Cruise, he co-starred with Kevin Bacon in A Few Good Men. So Tom Cruise has got a Bacon number of one. <laughs> Mike Myers. He has not co-starred with Kevin Bacon, but he has co-starred with somebody who has, Robert Wagner. There's Robert Wagner. So he's got a Bacon number of two. Marilyn Monroe. Well, she was dead before Kevin Bacon started making films, but nevertheless, she's still got a Bacon number of two because she co-starred with Robert Wagner. And Charlie Chaplin, well, he co-starred with Barry Norton, and that's probably the first and last time you'll ever see Barry Norton. He also co-starred with Robert Wagner. So Charlie Chaplin, who again is in the silent era of films, has actually got a Bacon number of three. Only three steps it takes in order to get to Kevin Bacon. Well, the important thing here is not so much Kevin Bacon, but in fact, Robert Wagner. Robert Wagner is the, the hub, if you like, which connects these people together. Now, why is that? Well, Robert Wagner's old. He's made lots of films. Therefore, he's had lots and lots of co-stars. Well, you can play this game with lots and lots of 
actors, okay? There's a, there's a database out there. So for example, uh, Tom Cruise has also got a, a Kidman number of one. They've co-starred in these films here. Um, he was also Mr. Kidman for a while. But you can look at all the actors and plot the frequency of the number of co-stars it takes in order to connect up those actors. So what we do is we think of actors as being nodes and the links between those nodes as being the number of uh, films in which they're cast jointly. And you can plot the frequency of that. So along here, we've got the number of co-stars effectively, and up here we've got the frequency on which it occurs. Now that doesn't look like the Poisson or the normal distribution that I showed. Not least for one reason, that it's actually plotted on logarithmic axes. And that's a key point because that brings out uh, an important feature, and that is for sufficiently large values of uh, the number of links, this turns into a straight line. And what that's telling you is that the probability distribution is in fact described by a, a power law. And it turns out that that number is about 2.3, a number close to two. Two's the magic number to remember. The average distance between actors picked at random is about 29. So it takes 29 links in order to get from one actor to the other. What's this graph telling you? Well, if we look, whoops, if we look here, then the vast number of actors have only got one or two co-stars. They're bit players, extras. They star in one film, they're no good, they move on. But you've got a smaller fraction of uh, actors who nevertheless have got very, very large number of co-stars, thousands, okay? What's special about a power law is that it doesn't have a scale associated with it. So in that respect, it's got an important property that a fractal has got. The idea of a scale is not a useful one to, to hold. Well, we can play this game with other kinds of uh, networks. And this is where the sex comes in. Some people ask the question, how many sexual partners have you had in your lifetime? So these were people aged between the age of 18 and 74. The blue triangles here are the boys' responses. The red ones are the girls. And what you've got, again, is the frequency plotted on logarithmic graph paper. And we're seeing, again, that it turns into a straight line, which tells us that we've got a power law here. So what's this telling us? It's telling us that the, the vast majority of people have uh, one or two relationships. But look, there are some players out there <laughs> who are claiming that they've had a thousand. Also, there's a disparity between what the boys and the girls say. So either the boys are boasting or perhaps the girls are being coy. 